Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today is about a question that I received about heaven. And this person that's emailed me, they said, how do you know what you experienced was not a hallucination? So let's go into this and how I say that, well, it's not actually just me who said this was not a hallucination. So let's go back in time to 2001, the night of May the 6th. I was struggling because I had like a flu thing and I went to bed and I woke up about two o'clock in the morning. I don't know. All I know is that it was dark and the lights were off and my husband was in bed beside me asleep. It's only from all my medical files that I know it was approximately two o'clock that I must have woken up because it took me about 10 minutes to get to the toilet. So today I'm going to show you my floor plan of the house I used to live in. It's in my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. This book is on Lulu and the link is below if you want to go copy, get a copy. I've got it in the hard copy like this and it's also available as a PDF email attachment. So ebook, okay? So on page 35 is where I have the diagram of my house, okay, of where I was. But I'm not going to show you that because it's, hello, it's just too tiny. So this is where I'm talking about my floating experience, okay. So what I've got is the diagram that I used in my book. Here it is. So I'm just going to get over here so I can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my bedroom. Okay, now the front door was here. So when you come into the, the house, you're straight away in a living room. There's a sofa here. That was a three-seater sofa. And there's a doorway that goes into the master bedroom. Off there, you walk around here. There's a walk-in closet. And then you walk around here. And this is totally, this was a bathroom here. There were sinks there. And here is the toilet in with the shower. So there were sinks there, okay? Um, with big, this was all mirrored wall on, along there. All right, so over here, this is the doorway that goes into the kitchen and dining room over here. And then there's a hallway there that goes up to um, two other bedrooms and another bathroom. Okay, so let's talk about the night when I was floating. Okay, I got up, I was in this bed here. And this was my side of the bed, if you really want to know this intimate information. So I got out of bed. And I had to walk to here to the toilet. It honestly took me about 10 minutes because I'd take a step and I was leaning on the wall. And I remember trying to get breaths in. There was nothing in me at that point to wake him up. <laughs> Funny that. I had no inclination to wake him up. So I got to the toilet. I remember passing out and going to sleep. And it was natural. And that's what scares me. And that's one reason why I don't like talking about this too often, because it is very traumatic. I was literally dying to go to the toilet. So I do like making a joke out of it, seeing the humor of it. But the other thing is here, I went to sleep like anyone would go to sleep. It was as natural as every day or night when you lay down, you close your eyes, and you go into a dream state. That is why it was so scary for me. So at least you know today I'm being honest and raw about this stuff. So I passed out on the toilet and I fell on the floor. Obviously, bang. Now, my ex-husband, he was asleep over here. He said that he woke up because I was banging on the wall. There was no way known I was going to bang on that wall to wake him up all that distance away because you've got to go through this hallway to get up there and this is a closed off room okay that was a closed off room where I was so how did I make that much noise when it took me 10 minutes to walk from there to there so I doubt highly that was me who banged but we can't dispute the facts here and the facts is he woke up regardless of how he woke up he came in and he said that I was already on the floor, lifeless and blue. Now, I worked in police forensics. I can't disguise what I did there because I've signed a confidentiality agreement. But 
I worked in forensics for three years. And I sort of know some things about, you know, other people that I've experienced in my personal life that when a person dies, you don't go instantly all over blue. It is a process that comes. So I hope that this isn't too traumatic for you. Okay, please go and talk to someone if this does make you feel in any way um, negative about this okay if it starts to trigger you please go talk to somebody okay because even this fact it, that's one reason why I don't like talking about this the night I died because it can trigger in other people so please know how sensitive I am a massive empath I don't want to hurt anybody okay so if this information does hurt you please go and talk to a professional okay so I was on the toilet I was on the floor of me he ran back out here around his bed. Over here is where the phone was. So he got the phone and he rang 911. They turned up approximately um, 10 minutes later. And this is why I say that I was clinically dead for 14 minutes. Okay? Because it took them minutes and minutes to turn up. So I'll tell you now what happened in my reality. I went to sleep and it was just like any other night when you close your eyes and you go to sleep. Instantly, I was over here floating above this chair in the corner. My feet were about three feet from the, well, I did not have feet, so I can't say that. But I know that it was a 12 foot ceiling and I was right up near the top of it and I'm a six foot person. So I'm, not, I'm five foot eight, I mean. So this was a 12 foot ceiling. So I was right up there. I was right up near the ceiling. And I'm looking down on what's going on. So the first ones that arrived were two paramedics. They, um, My ex came through from here because he'd obviously been with me. He heard them turn up. They must have yelled out or something. I don't know. But he came out and he let them in the front door. And they all, the three of them, my ex and the two paramedics, walked through the house straight past me. And they went down here and around to where I was. I could not hear at all what they were saying because I was over here. I could not hear them at all. I could not make out any noises. It was really soft tones that they were saying. And I'm just sitting there, lying, oh, <laughs> floating there. And I'm looking down and I'm observing the lounge room because it was empty. And... It was peaceful. There was no urgency. There was no fear. It was peace. Okay? So that's um, something I explained in my book. So then um, the next crew turned up. Um, new, the ALS, Advanced Life Support Crew, the paramedics, they turned up. And they came as well. So now we've got four paramedics and my ex and me. So there's six in the house now. But then more people turned up. We had a sheriff. And we had another person who, they wore a uniform, I don't know, but I think they were attached to the sheriff. It was someone with the sheriff's office that came. So there was two of them. There was a fire, there were two fire engine guys. And then um, there was police, the sheriff, the police, and there were some other people there as well. So all up with the four paramedics, me, my ex, two, the fiery, the sheriff, the other person, there was at least 10 or 12 at the house. Only four went in here. Only four. So the reason why I'm doing this video today is, was this all a hallucination? If this had been a hallucination, how did I know who came into the house? They were here and you had to go all the way down here, walk around here, in through this bathroom, through a, that was a wall, go through this doorway to where I was. How did I know with all this distance what these people over here were wearing, what their facial expressions look like? Were they bald? Did they have long hair? Did they have slim or um, pudgy appearance? What colours were their uniforms? How would I know all that information unless I was actually here watching it all happen? I heard all their conversations. I was listening intently. There was one there with a clipboard and they were making notes. So I've got a clipboard here. Here's my clipboard. And they had their pen 
and they were like listening and writing things down. And I was actually sitting there thinking, good, this is documented. I now know what was said so it can be verified. Because this person was like watching and listening and writing everything down. Okay? So when I woke up um, in hospital, I actually had a visit from the sheriff. He came and saw me and said, hey, what happened? And I said to him, who was the person with you that night? And he looked at me and he said, what do you mean? I said, I can tell you who was in the house. There was you, there was that, there was that person that looked like that. This person that had this thing and that big pudgy belly and their skin was sticking out through the, you know when you, you, you stretch your shirt so much that your skin comes through the buttons? That's what it was like. So I explained all these people who never came into the toilet area. They only came to here. How could I possibly know that information? unless I was actually there in the living room and watching from my perspective. How could I know all that information? For 45 minutes they were there. 45 minutes I sat there because it's timed in my medical file. The, the paramedics arrival, the first, um, they were called BSL, BLS, Basic Life Support Crew. They, they turned up first, the two paramedics. And it was about 10 minutes later that the second crew turned up. And then it was about half an hour that they were all there working on me before they took me out of the house. So in my file, my medical file, it says that they were, it, everyone was in the house for 45 minutes. I floated for longer than that because it was when they all left, <laughs> that's when it got really interesting. Because in my book, Floating, that goes for a few pages. So that goes from page 35 up to 53. So that's 15 pages where I talk about how I floated. But then when they all left was when the blue orbs turned up. I don't go into that one in this video. But today's video is about hallucination. Was all this a hallucination? How could it possibly be a hallucination when I've got the sheriff sitting in front of me with his file notes, came in to see me, and I said to him, who was that person standing next to you? They were on your right. He said, how would you know that, that they were standing on my right? And I said, well, they weren't sitting down. No one sat down in that house for 45 minutes. He said, how did you know that? I said, because I was there watching you all. I was in that living room. I was standing, sitting, floating, floating here, watching you all. And I saw who came through into where I was. He verified every fact I said. He verified the conversations. He verified the uniforms that they all wore. He verified every detail I saw. So it wasn't me who said this was a drug-induced hallucination. It was the sheriff. Now, huh, let's talk about integrity. Do you think this guy who at that point had about eight years experience as a police officer, do you think he knew how to be observant? Do you think he knew how to take statements and write down facts and, and factual um, events? Do you think this guy lived by a diary where every every date and time is allocated? This occurred, then this occurred, then this occurred, then this occurred. And plus, he also had the notes that were written down by that other person who was in the house. So they would have been saying things like 2.24 p.m. a.m. this happened. At 2.26 a.m. this happened. At 2.32 at a.m. this is what happened. So he had all that and how did I know all those events if I was still here? Because it all happened out here. So it wasn't me who said this was a hallucination. It was the sheriff. Somebody with so much experience, training and skills in how to be observant. Hope you've liked this video, guys. Talk to you all soon. Bye.